It came for us in the graveyard. We were driving my friend's really old beat-up Subaru through a massive graveyard. We stopped and walked down a hill and came across a little pond. There was someone sitting on a rock on the other side of the pond. The figure was all black and we couldn't make out any features other than the fact it looked like a man who was wearing some old-style top hat. We stupidly waved and shouted hi. He didn't show any acknowledgement and continued sitting still on the rock. All of a sudden, he jumped to his feet, started running to us on the water, and then vanished in thin air about halfway on the pond. My friends and I screamed and ran back to the car. The car wouldn't start, and we heard something banging on the back of the car. It wasn't a constant bang, but every few seconds or so we'd hear it. Nobody was outside from what we could see in the dark but something was making a noise on the car. I opened my phone and started dialing my mom to come give us a boost, but I had no service. None of us had any cell service. The next 30 minutes were spent trying to get our car started. No banging was heard afterwards, but we felt this heavy pressure around us. Car started and she hit the pedal to the metal. We sped out of the graveyard so fast, immediately crossing the gates, all of our phones regained cell service. One thing I know for certain is that someone or something was out there, and it was not an animal or a human. About a month ago, I went over to my girlfriend's house, except I felt really uneasy when I went into the living room. Turns out, they replaced a china cabinet with one of her grandmothers, whom passed away a few months back. Her grandmother was bedridden in the hospital, and I've never gotten to meet her. I felt uneasy the whole time. Being around her grandmother's furniture made me so anxious and almost sad. When I told her she said it was probably nothing, she went to the bathroom. When I went over to the cabinet, it was about six feet tall, dark wood. It had two doors on the side and glass up front, and in the back was a mirror. I was looking at the teacups and small baby dolls when I could swear I saw someone in the mirror behind me. Just a silhouette. I called out to my girlfriend, but as I did, I heard a shrill screech from the bathroom. I start pounding on the door and it opens. She was sitting on the floor, crying. She said she saw someone in the bathroom mirror. We booked it out of her house. No shoes, no jacket, nothing. Just ran out right into my car. I drove for an hour or so with no destination. When I returned her to her house, her mom was sitting on the doorstep. She said she kept seeing shadows move. It was good to see an old friend. When I was 37, I went to my high school reunion. I flew into the nearest airport and rented a car. The distance was about 35 miles through a very rural and almost abandoned part of the country. About three miles outside of town, I see someone on the side of the road flagging me down. It turned out that it was one of the guys I had attended school with. Jim gets in the car and we start talking. I had not seen him in 20 years, but he still looked the same, maybe a little older. We get to town and I ask him if he wants to come to the VFW and have a drink. He says, no, just take me home. Jim's parents had lived only a few blocks from my grandmother's house, and I turned in that direction, but he said to take him to the outskirts of town. There was a mobile home park out there, and I figured that is where he lived. When we reached the end of the turnoff, he said, just drop me here. It was good to see you again, and he walks off into the night. I go to the VFW, met some of my old classmates, we start to talk. As we are talking about who is coming to the reunion, I mentioned that I had just picked Jim up three miles east of town and had dropped him off. Everyone gets quiet, even the guy singing karaoke stops and lays down the mic. My cousin goes white as a new t-shirt. Barb, Jim died on that curve eight years ago, rolled his car. We were all at his funeral, I was told. I started to feel really dizzy and I went out to the car to take some deep breaths. There on the seat is the local newspaper, printed eight years previous, containing Jim's obituary. I still have the paper. It's a chilly autumn day, and school's just ended. Everyone's gone in different directions, and I'm left to walk home alone. The sun's setting, casting eerie shadows on the streets. Leaves rustle ominously in the wind, and my nerves are on edge. I pick up my pace, wanting to escape this creepy vibe. The familiar neighborhood now feels eerie, and I hug my backpack tight for comfort. As I turn a corner, I stumble upon a dimly lit alleyway. A strange feeling creeps over me, like someone's watching my every move. 
I look around but see nothing. Then, a faint, chilling whisper reaches my ears. Help me. Please. It's coming from the alley I just passed. My heart races, but curiosity gets the best of me. I head into the alley, my footsteps echoing in the quiet. The whisper guides me to a rundown building. Its windows are shattered and the front door hangs off its hinges. The voice grows more urgent and I can't ignore it anymore. I push open the door and step inside. The air inside is damp and heavy with a strong smell of decay. The whisper leads me deeper, my footsteps echoing on creaky floorboards. Finally, I reach a small, decrepit room where the voice seems to come from. In the corner, I see her, a girl with long, tangled hair, her face hidden in the shadows. I ask if she's okay, but she slowly turns, revealing hollow eyes and a twisted grin. Fear seizes me as she lunges forward, her hands like gnarled claws. I bolt out of the room, and the whisper becomes maniacal laughter. Echoing as I run, I finally make it home, gasping for breath and slam the door shut behind me. I'm safe, but the horrors of that walk will never leave me.